Ага. On the load for this morning. And, uh, his continued care for us and uh, for giving us uh, this Sabbath to worship him and uh, glorify his name. And uh, This Sabbath morning, I want us to look at uh, something in uh, this word. The re robe offered uh, by Jesus Christ. The free robe offered by Jesus Christ. A story in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 and 14. Let us stand there story in the book of Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 and 14 and Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they will not come again. He sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage, but they made light of it, and went their way, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and uh, the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out in the highways and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he had said unto him, Friend, how cometh thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him up and uh, hand and foot and take him away and cast uh, him into outer darkness there shall be a weeping and gnashing of days for many are called but few are uh, chosen and so here we have uh, a theme of uh, investigative judgment that uh, is going on Many have been invited in the wedding, but uh, uh, as you can see, the gospel invitation is uh, for everyone. First of all, it was made to the Jewish. The rejection of the gospel and the rejection of the Son of God ultimately uh, ended in the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. It's a, 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 a solemn thing. And then the Gentiles were invited in and uh, the investigative judgment started in 1844. And so in the parable of uh, Matthew chapter 22, uh, the Lord actually is uh, talking to individually, uh, to, to us individually and uh, he wants us to know and understand what will happen at the end of the day if we uh, reject uh, the gospel invitation. The story of the children of Israel uh, during the first coming of Jesus Christ, their trials and their attitudes uh, is the same 
same thing that will happen to uh, the people who have invite, been invited the second time to the wedding. And so the Jewish were invited, they rejected Christ and crucified him, uh, their city was destroyed, the Gentiles now are invited. And then they, they also are under investigative judgment since 1844. Go, uh, uh, Jesus Christ has uh, been uh, looking at the people who profess to be Christians. As Jewish professed to be Christian and Messiah was sent to them, so also we are being investigated if the things we say are so. And uh, so you find that uh, uh, the guests that were invited, and when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there was a man which had not a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, cometh, how cometh thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the uh, uh, utter darkness. Uh, when you, you read the Christ Object Lesson, page 309, uh, Christ Object Lesson, page uh, 309, this is what we find. This garment was a gift from the king. Salvation is a gift. By wearing it, the guests showed their respect for the giver of the feast. COL 309. This garment was from the was a gift from the king. Salvation is a gift. By wearing it, the guests showed their respect for the giver of the feast. But one man was clothed in his common citizen dress. He had refused to make the preparation required by the king. The garment provided for him at great cost he disdained to wear. Thus he insulted his lord. To the king's demand, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? He could under nothing. He was self-condemned. Then the king said, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. So the, the, the salvation that has been um, uh, procured for us, it was through a painful process. We are told that uh, heaven risked the plan of redemption. Jesus Christ could have seen and be lost. Jesus Christ himself put at stake his own existence to be lost. His deity was his as long as he never seen as long as Satan never bruised his head, his the, the date was still his. But if Satan could have been able to bruise the head of Jesus, he could have been lost forever. And that, that's why we don't have a second God in what we call the Trinitarian theology. Christ, at a painful price, paid uh, uh, for. Uh, our sins. And so it is not something to joke about with. It is something to consider. Continued on uh, by, by, the way, by the wedding garment. By the wedding garment. COL 310. By the wedding garment in the parable is represented the pure, spotless character which Christ's true followers will possess. Uh, let us turn to uh, the book of Isaiah. Is it 6110? Check it out. <clears throat> Isaiah 61.10 Somebody there? Yes. Yes, this is something that um, we have to be rejoicing in. This is something that we have to be rejoicing in. And uh, listen to us. I'll continue with the uh, Christ object lesson. But uh, I want you to look at uh, FLB 113. Point three FLB one thirteen point three. Let's try to zoom this <clears throat> FLB FLB one thirteen Do 
we have it? FLB? Yes, I have it here on the screen. Somebody to read it? <coughs> yes. This room, when in the room of heaven, as in it not one tribe of human devising. Christ is his humanity brought out a perfect character. And this character he offers to impart to us. All our righteousness are as filthy rags. Everything that we of ourselves can do is defiled by sin. But the Son of God was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Sin is defied to be the transgression of the law. Yes. But Christ was obedient to every requirement of God. So the robe woven in the loom of heaven has no it has in it not one thread of human devising. That is why it's a gift that uh, we are given. So go back to uh, COL 310. It says, By the wedding garment in the parable is represented the pure, spotless character which Christ's true followers will possess. To the church it is given that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, not having spot or wrinkle or any such a thing. That is corresponding to Ephesians 5.27. The fine linen says the scripture is the righteousness of the saints, Revelation 19.8. It is the righteousness of Christ, his own unblemished character, that uh, through faith is imparted to all who receive him as their personal savior. And so uh, Christ is willing to give us uh, this uh, robe woven in the loom of heaven. <coughs> what does it mean a robe woven in the loom of heaven? Uh, first Peter, uh, second Peter 1, 4. Second Peter 1, 4. What, what does it mean by a loom woven in heaven without a human one? Uh, second Peter 1, 4. Yes. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Yes. That by this you may partake us of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through life. Yeah, this is the partaking of the divine nature, and humanity doesn't have a divine nature. It is only Christ who imparts the divine nature, which is his own spirit, to help us be able to overcome uh, sin. And so every day we are being uh, uh, we are being um, investigated as the people who have come to the wedding and the robe has been provided. You have to look at yourself and uh, see that uh, uh, are you walking in this robe that uh, you have been given? Uh, First John chapter two verse six says that uh, whoever that says that he is in Christ must walk. Whoever that says that he abides in him must walk as even he walked. When Christ gives you the the the, the robe itself, he gives you the strength to be able to uh, maintain it, remain spotless. And uh, uh, God is looking for this last generation. Uh, in Jeremiah 23 verse 6, we are told that uh, in his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely and this his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 6, so beautiful. Jeremiah 23 verse 6. Uh, I, I find... These days, uh, <laughs> the word of the Lord is refreshing unto my life because it really gives me hope amidst all that is happening in the world, amidst all that is surrounding us. The word of God gives me hope. When I read such a verses, I am charmed by the loving kindness of our Father. Behold, what manner of love the, lo the Lord has bestowed upon us that we may be called his children. And it doth not appear how we shall be, but when 
he appears, we shall be like him. Jeremiah 23, verse 6, In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name where he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. The Lord wants to write a name upon us. And you remember, uh, uh, the, the priest in the sanctuary he had a mitre, and what was written on his mitre? Holiness unto Jehovah. This is what the Lord wants to write in our life. Psalms, the division of Psalms 71, 16. We are just looking at uh, the robe of righteousness. Psalms 71, the division, verse 16. I'll go in the strength of the Lord God. I'll make mention of thy righteousness, even of thine only, not my own righteousness. Psalms, uh, the division 71, 16. And uh, I'd like to add on that the division of Psalms 115, look at 115, what it says. God is looking upon our people these days whom he can confer his righteousness and they stand for him in the world that is full of darkness. Verse 1, not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory. For thy mercy and for thy truth sake. It is not about us. It is about Christ himself. For us, it is said we are unclean things. Uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6. We are unclean things. Our righteousness are filthy rags. And so not unto us, O Lord, not unto us. But unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and for thy truth sake. Surely shall one say in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come and all that are in sins against him shall be ashamed. Isaiah 45 verse 24. It is only on him that uh, we can run. It, it's only in him that the righteous run and then they are not moved. Isaiah 45 24. Surely shall one say in the Lord have I righteousness. No one can manufacture any righteousness that is fit for heaven. But only in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth unto it, and they are saved. Christ object lesson, page 311. COL 311. COL 311. What will make us stand? The great day of the wrath of the God has come and who shall be able to stand? Only the covering, uh, how shall we be able to stand? What will make us stand? Only the covering which Christ himself has provided can make us meet to appear in God's presence. Who shall be able to stand? Who shall be able to stand in the everlasting fires? Only those who are clothed with the robe that Christ has provided. This covering the robe of his own righteousness, Christ will put upon every repenting, believing soul. I counsel <clears> thee, <throat> he says, to buy of me white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Revelation 3.18 The robe woven in the loom of heaven has in it not one thread of human devising. Who can say today that I have overcome sin? No one can say that. But we can say that in Christ, I have victory over sin. Because this is, this is it. Uh, we are told that um, justification is a legal statement when it comes to the laws of the land. But when it is it's spoken by heaven, it comes with the power of forgiveness. Justification comes with the power of forgiveness and the word forgiveness comes from two words for and give and so you are giving out something and Christ is giving in something forgive so justification comes with the two words forgiveness and it's not just a legal statement as the laws of the land is whereby the judge told, tells you that you are a thief but I have set you free go home and the judge doesn't give you anything to make you not be a, 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 a thief anymore. 
When it comes from Christ, he forgives. And the word forgive comes from the two words for and give. So you give for something else. You give out what you have and Christ gives you what he has. Forgive. That is what Christ does. And what does Christ give you? His pure and spotless life. We are told, this robe woven in the loom of heaven has in it not one thread of human device. In Christ, in his humanity, wrote out a perfect character. And this character he offers to impart to us. All our righteousness are filthy rags. Everything that we of ourselves do is defiled by sin. But the Son of God was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Sin is defined to be a transgression of the law. We read that in FLB 113.3, and also it is in uh, COL 3.3. 11. Look at uh, the book of Hebrews. We are just about it. Hebrews chapter 5. Just reminding myself <coughs> of uh, uh, normal things. But these things we speak so that um, we may be strengthened in the Lord always. We speak of these things that uh, we may be uh, strengthened in the Lord uh, always. Uh, <coughs> verse 5. Uh, start uh, from, um, let's start from verse 1 because it, it, it's not long. We reach at uh, verse uh, 9. Yes. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things for them to work. That he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of, uh, out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed uh, with infirmity? And by wisdom hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man taketh his honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was armed. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, yes. but uh, he, he that said unto him, uh, Thou art my son, today have I joined thee. Yeah? Yes. That's verse 5. Verse six. Verse six says, and he said also in another place, thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. And now look at the, these three verses, seven, eight, and nine. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and he was heard in that he feared. What did Christ fear? What is that he feared? Which death? eternal separation from the Father. So Christ feared that he could be uh, separated from Father forever because of sin. And verse 8, Though he was a son, yet learned he obedient by the things which he suffered, and he being made perfect, now look at that, and he being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So he procured for us eternal salvation through his perfect humanity, <clears throat> living a perfect life. Last couple of points. What shall we do then? Revelation 19, 7 and 8. If this is how the things are, this is the hope for those who are hopeless, that Christ has given us the strength we need. He got it for us. After fearing eternal separation, he knew how it will be so bad to us. And then he procured for us the salvation that we need and gives us that robe, his perfect humanity blended with the divinity. We partake of the divine nature. Revelation 19, 7, 8. What yes. shall we do then? Let us be glad and rejoice. Yes. And give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife is made of herself ready. And the book was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, 
For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Yes, for the fine, fine linens. Let us be glad that we have been invited in this wedding. Let us be glad that we have been invited in this marriage. And the only thing that we can do is avail ourselves. If you avail yourself, then Christ will be able to do everything for you. Will be able to give you the strength um, that um, you need in such a day. By his perfect obedience, he has made it possible for every human being to obey God's commandment. COL 3.12, that is the last thing that we are reading. COL 3.12. COL 3.12. It's just by his perfect obedience. Can you see it? Just go ahead and read it. By his perfect 312, by his perfect obedience, he made it possible for every human being to obey God's commandments. When we submit ourselves to Christ, the heart is united with his heart, the will is merged in his will, the mind becomes one with his mind. The thoughts are brought into captivity to him, we live for we live his life. You see that when our hearts are knit with his heart, we don't live for self. The, the only way to overcome sin is not to live for yourself. If you understand that you have to live for somebody else, then you will be careful in everything that you do. This is the only way to overcome sin. This is the only way to, sell, to slay self because self is what brought Satan down and that is the problem with many people. And the only way to slay self is to live for another person. This is what it means to be clothed with the garment of his righteousness, to slay self and to live his life, not to live for yourself. Then as the Lord looks upon us, he sees not the fig leaf garment, not the nakedness and deformity of sin, but his own robe of righteousness, which is perfect obedience to the law of Jehovah. The guests at the marriage feast were inspected by the king only those who were accepted who had obeyed his requirement and put on the wedding garment so it is with the guests at the gospel feast all must pass the scrutiny of the great king and only those are received who have put on the robe of righteousness those who have accepted to live for christ and not to live for self may god help us this morning that um we will live for him and uh, we will not live for self. Above all, the only thing we need is Christ in our life and nothing else. If we accept Christ in us, then he will remove everything that is not of his and then he will make us perfect for his cause. May the Lord bless us this Sabbath as we worship him in truth and in spirit. Uh, redeemed. We can sing redeemed and we pray. Redeemed how I, I love to proclaim it.
With me, Lord, continually dwell. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lord. Redeem, redeem, redeem. His child and forever I am. I know there's a crown that is waiting in yonder bright mansions for me. And soon will the Spirit made perfect, at home with the Lord I shall be. Redeem, redeem. Redeem by the blood of the Lord. Redeem, redeem, redeem. His child and forever I am. Our Heavenly Father. We thank you this morning for the free gift of salvation, the robe of righteousness through thy son. We pray that, Lord, we may accept and avail ourselves for this robe, that, Lord, we may be clothed and uh, our names may be written, holiness unto Jehovah, the Lord our righteousness. Lord, without thee we do not have any strength, but in thee, Lord, we, uh, Philippians uh, say that uh, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so I pray that uh, we may accept Christ personally in our lives and Lord help each other towards the way of salvation and not towards the way of sin. Thank you for thy Sabbath and we know that as you have promised that uh, you will uh, give us a double portion of blessings, Lord you will remember us in thy kingdom this day. We bless thy name and we pray for this country, we pray for thy people gathered all over the four corners of the world that each one may pause for a moment and think uh, how Christ died an ignominious death on the cross to uh, procure salvation for us. Help us, Lord, to accept thee fully in our lives so that we may be able to walk in thy ways. And now may thy will be done, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.